Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be learning how to interpret arterial blood gases or ABGs. This topic is one that a lot of my students tend to struggle with a bit, so I'll try to simplify things in this video and make it easy for you to solve ABG problems. We'll go over what ABGs are, the normal ranges of pH, PaCO2, and HCO3, the different types of compensation, and finally the steps to solve an ABG problem using a practice question. If you want to jump directly to how to solve an ABG problem, you can use the timestamps in the video description. So let's quickly go over what ABGs are and why they are important. An ABG is a blood test that is usually drawn by nurses or respiratory therapists. An arterial blood gas, as the name suggests, measures different blood gases in arterial blood. They measure how acidic or basic the blood is. You may see that basic and alkaline are often used interchangeably when dealing with ABGs. ABGs also measure the levels of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and bicarbonate in the blood. This test can help us understand the client's acid-base balance, ventilation, and how well gas exchange is being performed in the lungs. ABGs can also help us determine whether the client is experiencing respiratory or metabolic issues. So the first and most important thing to know about solving ABGs is to know what the normal ranges are for pH, PaCO2, and HCO3. So here are the normal ranges that we need to know for an ABG problem, and we'll talk a bit about each one. First, we have pH. The normal range for the pH of blood, which again tells us if the blood is acidic or basic, is 7.35 to 7.45. A neutral pH, or a solution that is neither acidic nor basic, is 7 on the pH scale. Anything above 7 is considered basic, and anything below 7 is considered acidic. So our blood, because it sits around 7.35 to 7.45, is naturally a little bit basic. So when we're talking about the pH of our blood, if the pH is higher than 7.45, or too basic, then we say that the body is entering alkalosis. And if our blood pH is less than 7.35, or too acidic, then we say that the body is entering acidosis. Both acidosis and alkalosis can be very problematic. Someone once told me a weird trick that helped me remember pH, which is to think of the scene from Batman where Joker falls into a pit of acid, which apparently gives him that bleached skin and green hair. I always think of falling into a pit of acid to remember that as pH falls, the solution becomes more acidic. Next, we have PaCO2 which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood. The normal range for PaCO2 is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury, or MMHG. I always write PaCO2 right under my pH because then you have 7.35 to 7.45 and 35 to 45. To simplify things and make it easy to solve ABG problems, for now, you can think of PaCO2 as a respiratory acid. The reason why we can say this is that high levels of CO2 in the blood ultimately leads to more acidity, and how our body regulates the levels of CO2 is by using the respiratory system. So that's where we get respiratory acid from. Simply put, if we have too much CO2 in the blood, we enter acidosis, because the respiratory system is not getting rid of enough CO2. So again, our PaCO2 level determines how much our body's respiratory system is contributing to changes in pH. A high level of PaCO2 means that the respiratory system is lowering the pH, and a low level of PaCO2 means that the respiratory system is raising the pH. Lastly, we have HCO3, which is bicarbonate. The normal range for HCO3 is 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter, or MEQ per L. Again, to keep things simple, you can think of HCO3 as a metabolic base, which is kind of the opposite of PaCO2. The reason why we can say this is that high levels of HCO3 in the blood ultimately leads to more basic blood, and how our body regulates the levels of HCO3 is by using the metabolic system, or the kidneys. So that's where we get metabolic base from. Simply put, if we have too much HCO3 in the blood, we enter alkalosis, because the kidneys are not getting rid of enough HCO3. So again, our HCO3 level indicates metabolic or kidney effects, 
and a high level of HCO3 means that the kidneys are raising the pH, while a low level of HCO3 means that the kidneys are lowering the pH. Now let's talk about what happens if the body is experiencing an abnormal pH, and what the body does to fix this issue. If the body is experiencing metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, or respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, the body should attempt to compensate by inducing the opposite condition. For example, if a person is experiencing respiratory acidosis, their body should attempt to induce metabolic alkalosis to compensate in an attempt to even out the pH. So if you find that the pH is kept within normal limits during an ABG problem, but PaCO2 and HCO3 are both out of range and opposing each other, then we call this full compensation. This is because one system has managed to compensate for the other, keeping the pH within its normal range. If the pH is not kept within normal limits, but PaCO2 and HCO3 are still out of range and opposing each other, then we call this partial compensation. This is because one system is trying to compensate for the other, but it is not enough to keep pH within its normal range. And finally, if the pH is not kept within normal limits, and PaCO2 and HCO3 are not both out of range and opposing each other, then we call this no compensation, or uncompensated. This is because one system is failing and is out of range, which is affecting the pH, while the other system is not trying to compensate. Finally, let's walk through the steps it takes to solve and interpret an ABG problem using an example along the way. Let's say we're giving the following ABGs. pH equals 7.51, PaCO2 equals 27, and HCO3 equals 20. I like to set up my problems with a chart like this. We have our ABGs written on the left, and on the top, we have the categories for acids, neutrals, and bases. You can quickly draw a little chart like this on a test, but I'll add a little bit more info here for the sake of the video. First, we always want to look at our pH. Here we determine whether our pH is basic, neutral, or acidic. In this case, pH is 7.51, which is higher than the normal range of 7.35 to 7.45. So let's go ahead and put that in the basic column. Second, we look at our PaCO2 to determine if the respiratory system is involved. Our PaCO2 here is 27. 27 is below the normal range of 35 to 45 for PaCO2. And the lower the PaCO2, the more basic the blood becomes. So now we can check off PaCO2 as being basic as well. Next, we do the same with HCO3 to determine if the metabolic system, or the kidneys, are involved. Our HCO3 here is 20. 20 is below the normal range of 22 to 26, and the lower the HCO3, the more acidic the blood becomes. So now we can check off HCO3 as being acidic. Now that we have our chart filled out, the next step is to look at the pH and determine which system is directly influencing it. Here, our pH is basic, so we want to know if PaCO2 is basic or if HCO3 is basic to know which system is influencing that pH. Using the chart, it's really easy to see that PaCO2 is the one that is also basic, which tells us that the respiratory system is the cause of the basic pH. At this point, we can say that the problem is respiratory alkalosis. Lastly, we want to determine whether the body is compensating for the respiratory alkalosis or not. In this case, the pH is abnormal, so we know right away that the body is not fully compensated. We do still want to know whether the body is partially compensated or not compensating at all. So we look at our PaCO2 and our HCO3, and we can see that they're both opposite and abnormal in the chart. This means that one is trying to compensate for the other. So the body is trying to fix the problem, but it is currently unsuccessful because the pH remains abnormal. So we can now say that the problem is being partially compensated for. And now we have all the information we need to give a solution to this ABG problem. The solution is partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. And that's about it for ABGs. If you'd like me to make another video solving other types of ABG problems, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.